everything that you know about the airport and everything that you know about layovers, throw it away. Toss it in the other room, lock the door. You don't know anything about layovers like I know layovers because I had to go through the layover of hell. I thought that my flight back home from Korea was going to be peachy king, you know? Like, no. I've flown from the US to Asia several times and I've never had to deal with such an annoying flight. So for this specific flight back home, I had a flight at like 5 p.m. My cousin and my aunt had a flight at 10 a.m. in the morning, couldn't get a flight together. My aunt was anxious about me going on a flight by myself. So I said, okay, fine, I'll go to the airport with you guys at 6 a.m. It's currently 5.20 in the morning. My flight is at 4.40, but bake and my aunt's flight are at 10 a.m. So I must follow them, apparently. I'm very tired. Me and bake didn't sleep at all. She used me being dead and looking dead. Hello. Or OOTD. Look how cute. Do you guys at the airport? Bye, babe. I almost fell asleep. Me too. See you at home. Bye, bye. I finally have arrived at the first terminal and it is only 6.30 a.m. The sun is shining very bright. The funny thing is that normally back home, this is around the time that I would usually get up, but the fact that neither me nor babe slept at all last night makes this even more dreadful. So I sat at the airport with nothing else better to do. I take out my vlog camera. I'm at the Incheon airport. I sit here, I'm vlogging on my camera. I just talk to myself and you know, Korea is super safe. So I see a bunch of other people just leave their luggage. They walk away, nobody cares. And I was like, hey, these are locals. This is what they're doing. So I should feel safe doing that too. So I go ahead, leave my luggage. I walk around the airport. I go shop at stores that slowly start opening up. I go to the bathroom like a few times, almost fell asleep. So because I was so tired and I knew I was gonna be at the airport for 12 hours, I went up to the info desk lady. I ask her, is there somewhere that I could just take a nap or where I could sleep until 5 p.m.? She tells me very discouragingly, no. We have individual sleeping pods, but you cannot get to them until you are past customs. So the part of the airport that I'm in is just the drop-off station. There's another section where you have to get past customs, but to get past customs, you have to check in your baggage. But wait, you cannot check in your baggage until four hours before your flight. And again, my flight is at 5 p.m. I cannot check in my baggage until 12.30 because my boarding time is at 4.30, even though my flight is at five. Cool, I guess that takes away some of the time that I have to wait, right? My flight gets delayed. It's not too much. My flight gets delayed 15, 20 minutes, whatever. So once 12.30 rolls around, I take my little luggage cart and I roll it over, get that checked in. And right after they check in your luggage, they check inside your luggage to see if it's like good to go. And they have you wait about five minutes or so. But this is my first time to Korea. So I didn't know if I had to wait longer or not. So just in case anything else goes wrong, I sit and I wait for 15 minutes. I think I hear my name. So I go up to the counter. Hey, did you guys call my name? Name. Turns out it wasn't me. I guess it was just someone who had a similar name. All right, cool. It's probably 1, 1 30. I make my little way. I go find other things to do. I look up, I see escalators. I see that there's food. I was already tired and exhausted. And then when I woke up that morning, I already hadn't slept for 24 hours. So I was running on pretty much no sleep. So everything just sounded gross and disgusting. I ended up going to a more like traditional Korean, like healthy restaurant. So I had mackerel and then soup. By the time I'm done eating, I've got an hour left until boarding. So I think to myself, all right, this should be enough time for me to go into customs. Go into customs thinking it's gonna take probably 30 minutes. It takes like five minutes. Now what I'm thinking in my head is, are you kidding me? I could have checked in my luggage, gone straight to customs, and then just taken a nap. But the downside of that is once I get past customs, there's not as many food options. It's just a lose-lose situation. Either I get sleep and no food, or I get food and no sleep. I chose food, food one. So my stomach's full, I'm a somewhat happy camper, and I just make my way to my gate. So I'm just strolling along, you know, walking through the airport now, just walking through the gates. There's a bunch of shopping everywhere, a bunch of stores, yada yada. I ended up buying a pair of sunglasses, but that's not important to the story. That's not the main point of this. And then finally, 
Allie, it's time to board my flight. We did it. We've made it through this hellish of a day on zero sleep. Probably haven't slept in 36 hours in this point. And we finally get on the plane. And then more shit goes down. So I get on the plane to go back home and I have my layover in San Francisco. Everything went smoothly in the 12 hour flight. We landed safely. San Francisco, I was supposed to have like a one and a half hour layover. I'll be home pretty soon. We're on the home stretch. Yeah, that didn't happen, obviously, or else I wouldn't be making this video about it. So to paint you a picture, my total travel time started at 6 a.m. in Korea. And then I went on the flight and then I landed in San Francisco. And by then I had been traveling for about maybe like 28 hours or so. Pretty exhausting. I think I smell. I haven't changed. I haven't slept in a proper bed in like 28 hours and I haven't brushed my teeth. Like that's pretty disgusting. I didn't have a toothbrush either. I didn't even see a place where you could buy a toothbrush. Whatever. I guess I'll just be a walking smelly person. So I open my phone and I get a notification. Your flight has been delayed. I open the app. I go to check it. 20 minute delay. Nothing to worry about. We had that happen. Cool. You know, I won't be here too long. I'll just go get a coffee. Wake myself up. I I see another notification. Your flight has been delayed. This time it got pushed back to an hour. And at this point I was getting really frustrated. I'm texting my family saying that I'll probably just end up getting a hotel if it gets delayed by another hour. Not too much later, the universe says, screw you. And I get another notification. Your flight has been delayed. I check. I check to see how long my flight has been delayed for. It's another hour. Literally, I kid you not, maybe like 15 minutes go by. No notification this time, but I check. The flight that was supposed to be at 5 p.m. now got pushed all the way back to almost 8 p.m. They had pushed back the flight a total of four hours hours. At this point, I'm ready to give up. I'm ready to just go to a hotel and just have a nice place to sleep. Again, to remind you, I'm stinky. I haven't brushed my teeth. I haven't slept in over 36 hours. I'm in the same clothes that I've been wearing since I was in a whole other country across the globe. So I'm walking around the airport. I'm deliriously tired and I'm pretty much just dragging my feet, trying to find a good place to take a nap. I see these seating areas around the airport. The best way I can describe them is that they look like a really large ottoman, big enough for someone to lie horizontally down on. So I see several people taking naps on these large ottoman cushion sofa thingies. So I think, all right, I just have to find an empty one so I could sleep. I saw almost the perfect spot, except that cushion was kind of in the middle of the airport and I didn't really want to sleep in the middle of the airport because I am a woman, you know, traveling solo. Maybe it's not the safest, even at the airport. Like you never know what could happen. So I walk around some more, you know, scouting different areas, trying to see if there was a better spot, a little bit more private, zero luck. I even try going to the airport lounges to see if they have something a little bit more remotely private. I ask them if they've got sleeping pods. They flat out just tell me no. So you're telling me that San Francisco, a large city, even that airport doesn't have sleeping pods, but Korea does? This is what's wrong with our country. We need sleeping pods at the airport. I digress. Even though this was upsetting, I just say thank you and I walk away. I go back to scouting out different places that I could potentially take a nap. I see that same cushion in the middle of the airport again. It's just taunting me. It feels like so public, but at this point, I'm just so tired that I just don't even care anymore. I just say, fuck it. I put my backpack down, plop my head on it, and I go to sleep. And it wasn't even that great of a nap, but it was just enough to get me through, at least until my flight departed. So finally, it is 7 p.m. And this is in Pacific Standard Time. When we actually got on the plane and sat down, it had been about four and a half hours. So my flight finally lands. I get home. Nothing goes wrong, thankfully, after the hellish travel days that I've had. And going to sleep in my own bed was like sleeping on a cloud. Best night's sleep I've ever had in my entire life. And that's not the end of it. So I knew that a four hour delay was way too long for people not to be compensated. So what do I do? Email the airline. You know what they gave me for a four hour delay on an internationally connected flight? I got 50 bucks. I'm not saying I'm not grateful for the $50. I'm just saying $2,000 flight versus $50. That's something's not adding up. That was a layover from hell. Now, was it worth it? No, absolutely not. I would never travel that much ever again. That was awful. It was the worst travel experience of my life. But what can you take away from this story? If you go on an international flight and you have a connecting domestic flight and you just happen to have a delayed flight, you can expect about $50 back. Huh? 
Okay, but on a serious note, I am really grateful that I was able to go on this trip and spend time with my family and that all my flights went good. You know, nothing went wrong. We're good. We're safe and sound. We're back home. So all in all, the trip was worth it. The flight was not. And I'll see you guys in the next vlog.